Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to, um, to be talking in this second conference uh, that I attended last year, the first, and it was as successful as it's looking this one. Uh, thanks to my previous two, uh, the previous two speakers, they had very distinguished presentations that uh, you will see that at the end, and without having been preparing this, or, um, uh, we will connect all the dots that uh, Dr. Didem and Dr. Uh, Kenny were talking uh, regarding uh, liquorice and maybe other plants. Well, the talk I'm presenting will be about COVID, obviously herbal medicines, but from a more clinical point of view. And when we enter into the slippery field of uh, clinical uh, domain, we have always to put a disclaimer beforehand because, um, well, you know that uh, to the best of my knowledge, I'm talking to academics, but I'm not providing by any means any professional medical advice or diagnosis. All the products I'm going to comment on, I just don't have any conflict of interest, but I'm not approving or disapproving their use. And in this particular occasion, yes, you can shoot the messenger. All um, this presentation is my own expert opinion, not that of my employers. And the aims, as I said, I'll try to provide an overview of what are we doing globally in different phytotherapy systems to integrate herbal medicines that are officially listed by the medicine authorities for respiratory conditions, such colds, flus, and, and asthma, into clinical use when this COVID-19 is happening around us, and whether this may be considered adjuvant therapies or not. For this, I will cover three, uh, uh, three dimensions of uh, phytotherapy, one is the Chinese, another one is the Ayurveda and the Western modern phytotherapy system. Uh, these are by far the three more organized approaches we have, uh, notwithstanding uh, some uh, genuinely African approaches that uh, sadly are not that structured and that don't allow to, to make for a, for a um, uh, meaningful entry on this um, overview. It's, as I said, very um, dangerous to start talking about COVID and clinical treatments. Uh, there's a widespread confusion about what a treatment of COVID is. And obviously not even Western medicine has a treatment to cure this viral infection. And we only rely on supportive and palliative interventions. Depending on the clinical stage, we move from over-the-counter analgesics, cough suppressors, uh, to uh, POM or prescription-only medicines when we unfortunately get to, get to hospitalize the patient. In this framework, herbal medicines may be considered an adjuvant therapy only, and, and we cannot emphasize enough this aspect. So to start with the traditional Chinese medicine response to COVID-19, um, they are in, in first position in this uh, presentation because they've been uh, quite, um, quite a long time working on SARS, for them, it all started in 2003, uh, where we have the first SARS uh, pandemic, global pandemic, was uh, quite more restricted in number of, of patients affected and, and countries affected. But nevertheless, it's, a, it's sparked the first global pandemic alarm. And at the time, the traditional Chinese medical uh, practitioners we're starting to work with clinicians, Chinese clinicians, and 
uh, on treating the patients in an integrated way. So they were talking to each other and trying their best to combine their approaches for a better outcome of the patient. Based on clinical results, the General Office of the National Health and the Office of the State Administration of Traditional Chinese Medicine encouraged the integration of herbal traditional Chinese medicines and Western medicine in the treatment of respiratory complications in coronavirus infections. And uh, they, they already advanced uh, several different prescriptions which were recommended at different stages of the disease. Uh, although to this day, the evidence remains pre preliminary at best, um, uh, the data indicate uh, promising results when both the um, traditional Chinese phytotherapy and the Western medicines integrate this, their approaches. The struggle to integrate both um, therapeutic approaches, uh, traditional Chinese medicine and Western medicine resumed sadly last year with the outbreak of the SARS-2 uh, virus or COVID-19. Uh, the Chinese were already having a well-oiled machinery to tackle this in an integrated way. Um, so again, TCN practitioners across China have been working along with regular medical Chinese doctors to control and stop the COVID-19 disease in a combined effort. The clinical data generated from sadly this time tens of thousands of confirmed hospital cases with all the documentation, the documentation that they have around them is being currently, as we speak, subjected to many meta-analyses to ascertain their actual effectiveness. In the meantime, and with the preliminary evidence uh, they've gathered, the diagnosis and treatment protocol of COVID-19 by the National Health Commission in China has already advised to continue integrating TCM in the treatment of this uh, pandemic. And if, because they feel that this effectively relieves symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat, myalgias and fatigue, shortens the course of the disease and reduces the probability of life-threatening complications. Uh, SARS, uh, according to the basic theories of traditional Chinese medicine, is what they call a one being, if I may <laughs> pronounce well, con uh, a one being um, um, diagnosed. And this um, is a general term for all contagious diseases that occur with high body temperatures. The, the Chinese Center for the Disease Control and Prevention recommended, therefore, protocols according to the one being classical pitching for all hospitalized patients. And this combines actually Western therapy with uh, traditional therapy. First of all, they administer antibiotics to prevent, to prevent any secondary bacterial infections. They use steroids if need to control excessive immunological responses, but they consider the use of certain herbal preparations as an adjuvant therapy. And last but not least, they add to, the, um, to this uh, old drugs, antiviral preparations. Interestingly, there are not specific recommendations for the use of herbal medicines in non-symptomatic patients or pre-hospitalized patients or post-hospitalized patients, which comes as a, as a bit of a surprise. And just to give you a flavor of what a clinical, typical clinical case in China looks like and how they combine these two approaches, I'll, I'll show you the three phases of, of one of the many clinical cases that are already published in the literature. A patient with viral pneumonia uh, get a baseline treatment 
uh, the one being approach, which is uh, obviously the, the two uh, antibiotics uh, to prevent bacterial infections in the lung, the antiviral, oseltamivir, and two anti-influenza patent herbal treatments together with ibuprofen to quench any, any fevers and ages. And in this case, the patient did not improve and eventually tested positive even with the one being approached. Then upon testing positive is moved into a COVID world and, and the TCM a practitioner makes a differential diagnosis of dampness and heat accumulation. And this uh, diagnose is treated by a decoction uh, twice daily for five days of 14 different herbal preparations, but including, uh, sorry, 14, 13, because uh, sometimes we include uh, inorganic uh, ingredients like talcum and uh, pay your attention, liquid rice is over there and is going to be a constant in many other uh, approaches all over the world. Uh, the patient after having just one dose uh, decreases the fever and sweats, all symptoms reduce only after three doses, that is one day and a half. And the patient feels less breathless, bloated, uh, increasing the appetite, which is good, and is still complaining of general muscular aging. And to um, stop this um, overall feeling of muscular pain, and they modified the, the formula before by removing two herbs and adding seven more of uh, uh, seven more herbs or six more herbs like here. And, and after one dose only, the patient reports feeling noticeably less muscular aging. In addition, at this moment, his uh, PCR is uh, negative at this point and can be dismissed uh, for uh, treatment at home. So formulas, the interesting thing of these uh, patented formulas, antiviral formulas that the Chinese have developed, they can be oral and parenteral via injection or intravenous infusions. And you have here a, a, a list of them. The two more important may be uh, those Lianhua, Kingwen, and Xiang Ping injections. And I just selected them, not because only the, also they are in the case study before, but because uh, it shows the approach of the Chinese is not only just mixing herbs, they are also using isolated molecules, in this case from uh, the king of Peters. The uh, conclusions for the approach of the traditional Chinese medicine to this uh, outbreak is that even if the evidence remains preliminary, the clinical evidence of all these uh, patients' outcomes, uh, the message to take home is China doesn't hesitate to explore the up to one role of herbal medicines. And this is possible in their case because they've already many, many years integrated both systems in their uh, health systems. Ayurveda is also responding to COVID-19 crisis uh, from, uh, with, the, with the blessings of the uh, Ministry of Ayush uh, that has set clinical regulations for research of Ayurveda, Unani, Sida, and homeopathic systems in the country. Uh, they already have selected several herbs in uh, uh, for example, andrographis, like the Chinese uh, injection before, ginger and glycerisa, well, liquorize again. And they tend to combine these herbs uh, with uh, two baseline treatments that they have, two Rasayana treatments to uh, prevent any uh, unbalances of, of, the, of the background mm, welfare of the patient, which are the trifala and the tridac, tricadu. What happens in the Western response for COVID-19? Well, the authorities here ask you to stay calm and carry on. Uh, get at home, 
get some rest, hydration, and maybe some NSAIDs in case you have fever. The problem is only, unless the patient is tested, we don't know if this is normal flu or COVID. And many patients will recur to OTC and symptomatic adjuvant treatments, including herbal medicines and ibuprofen and all together. For normal flu, uh, actually we have synthetic and natural ingredients approved by medicines agencies. And uh, we are uh, bombarded by both, uh, by both clinicians and non-clinicians about what herbal medicines role play here. Are they a temptation or a valid medical option? Well, from the moment that uh, most European medicine agencies have approved many traditional herbal medicines for over-the-counter uh, patient relief, this is a valid medical option in pre-hospitalized patients. Uh, despite the enormous amount of reviews we had on all the use of these plants, the problem is many of the pornographs we have are just listing and critically, and we need to provide a benefit risk assessment if we want to convince the clinicians. This is, was the, the project I carried on uh, just immediately after joining LGMU and the Center for Natural Products Discovery, trying to carry on an unbiased assessment of the benefit risk of Western phytotherapy. And uh, we selected many plants that were uh, approved by WHO and EMA, EMA, and we reviewed their clinical data and we made a assessment based on the evidence levels as the traditional medicine uh, for WHO recommendations uh, states and modern clinical decision systems adopted by the European agencies. The results of this assessment were uh, that from out of about 40 plants that we could use for several uh, respiratory syndromes, uh, in the context of COVID, we have five plants that could be a safe option to quench some symptoms uh, before you tested positive for COVID. Or are, pre, or are hospitalized. And these are Altea, Comif, uh, Mir, Liquorice, Hedera Elix, and Sambucus nigra. We've got uh, 12 promising uh, herbal uh, medicines, including garlic, andrographis, skin of bitters, echinacea, and ginger among everybody. And surprisingly, we were comparing obviously with reference drugs, as you have to always do if you want to do a, an unbiased study, you have to have reference drugs to come back to, to test your, your method. Uh, only, uh, only ibuprofen resulted promising and we couldn't find any compelling evidence to endorse the use of paracetamol and or codeine in the context of potential COVID infections. So the conclusions of all this uh, presentation is that uh, it uh, seems that there are three speeds in the integration of traditional herbal medicines in, uh, in the clinical management of COVID, high speed in the case of traditional Chinese medicine. They benefit from a top-down political and economical support. Uh, the objective obviously is positioning TCM as both a cultural flagship, a, tr a national treasure, and a global commodity, which is loable. Medium speed in the case of China, there's government uh, supporting Ayurveda, not able to allocate the necessary resources. And the objective, yes? you have two minutes left. Thank you. And the objective having a cheap, sustainable approach to primary health to relieve an already overburdened health uh, system. But uh, unfortunately, the first world has a low speed approach with phytotherapy research having uh, a bias welcome from scientific and medical communities. And uh, despite being recognized by EMEA or WHO, um, not really welcome uh, at the level of uh, clinical um, approaches. After these conclusions, I cannot but to uh, guess that the Chinese approach will yield results sooner or later, and new and better antiviral therapies will be rediscovered from traditional sources. And this strategy already yielded an overpriced to China in the form of artemisinin. 
and the reluctance of Western medicine to either clinically integrate any traditional approach or support the OTC use of otherwise recognized herbal medicines is negating patients a benefit, losing business opportunities, passively allowing off-label use of herbal medicines, and in the long run, encouraging the online commerce of unregulated herbal products with borderline claims and unknown quality. I thank you very much for your kind attention and I'm welcoming any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, Professor Prieto Garcia. Um, it's time for questions now. There are a number of uh, questions um, in the chat function. Uh, if, if I may start. Thank you.